Dragon's Dogma 2 is almost here. Couple of days left till full release of the second Dragon's Dogma game and so far, from what we could see, it really have the potential to be one of the best games in 2024. In this video we will check all the info about it and see what we can expect from the game when it comes out. But before we start, a quick reminder that the best support you can give to me and to this channel in general is by clicking that subscribe button guys. It will take a moment of your time, but on the other side it will be of a great help. So without further ado, buckle up and let's go! For all of you that don't know, Dragon's Dogma 2 is a sequel to the same named open world action RPG from 2012, developed and published by Capcom. Despite strong sales for the re-release and expansion Dark Arisen, it took more than 10 years for the sequel. Some would say it's too long period between these two games, but if you ask me if the game is good and they meet all the expectations, it's definitely worth waiting. Now, as I mentioned, in this video we will check all the important things that awaits us in the sequel, so let's first start with the story and the world itself. Instead of following directly after the events of the first game, DD2 will instead feature an all new story set in a parallel world to the original. This sounds really interesting, especially for people who didn't play the first game and want to skip it, although I strongly recommend not to skip it. First game is absolutely amazing, maybe you won't like the graphics, after all it's a 10 years old game, but believe me you will get used to it really fast, and with all other segments in the game you won't even notice the old graphics. Although the game takes place in a parallel world, the basic framing of the story is similar. The player takes on the role of the Arisen, whose heart was taken by a dragon, and must seek to slay it, accompanied by pawns, who serve as assistants. Unlike the first game, Dragon's Dogma 2 will include at least two major geopolitical factions, Vermund, the Human Kingdom, and Batal, a nation of a newly introduced race known as Vistran. Additionally, a third race exists in the form of elves, who dwell in a region known as Sacred Erbor and speak their own language. One really great feature in this game is that you won't be able to speak with elves if you don't know Elvish, or you don't have Pong who speaks with you so he can translate for you what they say. This is really amazing and it actually adds a whole another level of depth to the role playing in this game. Beside Fighting Dragon, which was obvious and expected, several other storylines appear to come into play. Dissa, the Queen Regent of Vermund, for example, seeks to set up a false Arisen, whom the pawns mysteriously obey, and to have her own son take over as a new ruler. Meanwhile, the people of Batal reject pawns entirely. Although both nations see the threat posed by the dragon, it seems that much of Dragon's Dogma 2's story will revolve around how they behave towards the Arisen and the pawns. When it comes to the world itself, it is expected to be larger than in the first game but there are some talkings that the map of DD2 will be even 4 times larger. Beautiful landscapes, big forests, deserts and canyons, plus the ability to climb on almost any surface in the game, I am more than sure that the exploration in Dragon's Dogma 2 will be extraordinary. When it comes to gameplay, the main aspect of it is obviously combat, but from what we could see so far, it seems that the core of Dragon's Dogma's combat seems largely similar in the sequel. The grab mechanics also makes a welcome return, allowing us to jump and climb on objects and enemies just like we did in the previous game. When we mention enemies, besides human enemies, there will be no shortage of goblins, ogres, griffins and other kind of creatures like in the first game. Plus to that there will be some new, more dangerous ones like medusa-like monsters and sphinx. Also we had a chance to see a huge stone giant who looks both terrifying and amazing. Arisen is the main protagonist in Dragon's Dogma, and same as in the first game, your heart was taken and eaten by the dragon, and nothing new, nothing original. The character creation is quite similar to the first game. I need to mention that besides creating human character, in Dragon's Dogma 2, player will be able to be a Batal, a cat people looking race, and this feature is highly welcomed. Will there be a chance to create your Arisen as elf remains to be seen, but I strongly doubt that it will be an option. The human race is the most common, which comes as no surprise. Traditionally, their kingdom Vermund should be ruled by Arisen, but the Queen Regent Issa supports her son, False Arisen. You as a player will need to learn why Pounce follow False Arisen and claim the throne as the rightful king of the human race and the Vermund kingdom. But all on the other side, with their look, resemble the Knaghit race from the Elder Scroll games. They are humanoid cats with fur, but the shape of their bodies is similar like human and elves. 
viewing metal pawns as a threatened barriers of misfortune, they do not revere a reason like humans. Instead, their devotion lies in their lambent flame, which they worship as a safeguard against calamity, with Empress Nadinia at its center. Elves live in Sacred Harbor, a remote village far away from the politics and problems of two other nations. They prefer not to interact with other races and stay in their calm and beautiful sanctum. Pound system is the most unique feature in the Dragon's Dogma game, and Dragon's Dogma 2 will keep the pound system used in the original game. Pounds are AI-controlled party members that join you on your adventures, not just as battle aids, but as virtual companions complete with their personality traits. You can form a party of four with one fully customizable main pawn and two support pawns. As the servants of the Arisen, their job, beside aiding you throughout your adventures, is to learn from you as well. Pounds are programmed to learn from your playstyle, and if you strategize well and doing well in combat, they will learn your playstyle and be that good as well. Now, unlike the pounds from the first game, in Dragon's Dogma 2, it seems that the pounds will be much more advanced. You will be able to add specialization to your pawn, so, for example, they can specialize in elven language and help you speak with elves by translating. Also, in Dragon's Dogma 2, they will have an important role in story, and beside that, in second game, it seems that there is a contagious disease that impacts pawns as they travel between worlds, called the Dragon's Plague. Rather than being weakened, pawns with the disease are said to display a remarkable performance and to become conspicuously bold in their speech and behavior. According to folklore, when the symptoms of the Dragon's Plague reach a terminal stage, it will result in devastating calamity, but the veracity of these claims is unclear. What this means, we actually don't know, but it seems that if this happens to our pawns, we need to be careful and keep our eyes on them, cause there is a chance they will go rogue on us. As I already mentioned, the combat in Dragon's Dogma 2 is more or less the same as in the first game. I forgot to mention that this combat system, in my honest opinion, is one of the best combat systems I have ever seen. It's not easy, far from that, but if you put some effort to learn how the combat in this game works, you will definitely have tons of fun. Beside base vocations, which are something like classes in the game, there are 4 new hybrid vocations in Dragon's Dogma 2. The Mystic Spear Hand is a brand new hybrid vocation for Dragon's Dogma 2, though it resembles the original game's Mystic Knight. This vocation specializes in both melee and magic. This means that you will have the ability to attack at close and long range. As a Mystic Spear Hand, you will fight and do physical damage with your specialized weapon, called the Duo Spear. This weapon is unique to this vocation, enabling you to attack multiple enemies simultaneously with the deadly points that cap both hands. Some of their magic spells also promise to give them crowd control abilities. As a Mystic Spear Hand, you can also paralyze your enemies or throw the bodies of defeated foes directly at other attackers. While Magic Archer might sound like a similar blend of a melee magic that the Mystic Spear Hand uses, the Magic Archer is actually more specialized. Your attacks with this class will be done with pure magic. Even the arrows themselves will be magic in nature. This class will primarily engage in long-range combat, utilizing magical arrows for shooting and casting spells. A Magic Archer's arrows are far superior to their physical counterparts as they always hit their intended target. Moreover, you can specifically choose the elemental nature of your arrows, thereby enabling you to target enemies based on their specific weaknesses. The Trickster is another brand new hybrid vocation, which specializes in conjuring illusions through the smoke created by their unique weapon, the Sensor. The illusions created by the Trickster can cause a group of enemies to attack each other or be used as a taunt to draw their attacks. Additionally, you can use the smoke to create a spectral clone which can draw the focus of attackers. Another ability allows you to create false areas of ground off of cliffs or walls you can see through but enemy can't. Overall, this class appears to provide you with tools to master the surrounding environment so that your party can attack from their strongest vantage point. Additionally, as a trickster, you will also have the ability to temporarily increase the power of your pounds beyond their normal limits. While we don't know more specifics, it's likely that the trickster will have other specialized buffs available to use as well. Based on all of this information so far, it seems reasonable to suggest that the Trickster would be a great choice if you are looking for a class that has more a support role. With Warfare class, you can choose to use any combination of three weapons in the game. Essentially, your choice of weapons allows you to switch between any three different vocations you choose. 
As a warfarer, you'll be able to choose skills from each of your chosen weapons or vocations. The warfarer looks to be an incredibly fun and versatile vocation. It will allow you to adapt your playstyle in real time as you respond to different enemy types, enemy weaknesses and environments. However, because warfarers have access to many skills, they will likely not be able to level skills as high as a single focus vocation. Players who choose the Warfarer vocation will need to be skilled with their chosen weapon types and able to quickly analyze combat situations to make the most of this potentially powerful class. How the unlocking of this new vocation works remains to be seen, but since the sequel is changing the advanced vocations to require the completion of a quest, it's likely that the method for unlocking hybrid vocation has changed too. The main vocation has been proved too and I can't wait to see how they work now. There is a lot of improvements from the first Dragon's Dogma game in almost every segment. Graphically, sequel looks really stunning, animations are way better, plot and NPCs looks more interesting than before. Beside the root and the dragon eating your heart, the story sounds really interesting. Combat is amazing as always and the new locations will give us more depth, more choices and will be huge improvement in combat segment and gameplay in general. Now, all of this sounds super cool, but will it actually be, we will see in couple of days. I will definitely play the game the moment it comes out and I plan to cover it more in depth on the channel, so in case you are interested and want to see more, make sure you smash that subscribe button right now. Also like on this video would be super appreciated so it can reach more people. What is your opinion about this game and what new feature in the game sounds the most interesting to you, feel free to tell in the comment section down below. I hope you enjoyed guys, that would be all and I'll see you in the next one.